Good morning, my name is Joe, I'm just doing the scripture reading, and it's from Zephaniah 3, 14 to 17. It's a really exciting passage today. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exalt with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love, and he will exalt over you with loud singing. My favorite part of that passage is that he will rejoice over us with singing. Um, that God will do that for us. But sometimes it's only if we're Selah. If we're pausing and listening to think about what we heard. You know, it is really hard to do that, isn't it? Even I have to. Even this morning, we, we, we sang three songs, and going through my mind is, what chord am I playing? Uh, how am I playing this? Uh, are we doing the right rhythm? Uh, what are the words? Uh, did I just sing a wrong word? Um, did, did, did we get there? Did we, did, did we pause? Could I hear? Could I see what the words were? Did I understand what the words were? Did I take in what the words were? Did anything of it mean anything to me, or did I just go through it? That's kind of the questions. Selah, are you listening? Because I can guarantee, I can guarantee this, God has been speaking. And he's always speaking. I want to example this. I've used this in the contemporary before, and I don't think I've used it here before, but I'm going to get them to play a video that uh, what you're going to hear is, is something a little different. This whole thing is actually Louis Giguillo uses this. And the sounds you're hearing are the sounds of stars, nebulas, other parts of deep space recorded by scientists here on, on Earth. Did you hear that? That's part of God's voice communicating to us. Communicating through his creation. That's the sound of Zephaniah 3.17 where it says, God rejoicing over us with singing. And those sounds are always around us. It's, it's always out there. God is always saying something, singing something. And every part of our day through through everything we experience, through, through every moment, even through, through every choice we make, his voice is always there. Now I know, I know this takes faith. It's what a person who believes in God and, and believes that, that he's created all this and all that. He's the one behind all those sounds. That's what faith tells us. He's always saying something to us. Problem. The problem for most of us, no. Problem for all of us is that we're just not pausing enough to listen. I'm not. Now let me clarify what I mean by pausing. Because I'm not talking about things like taking time to go out and listen to nature and sort of sit quietly meditating by clearing our minds or listening and meditating on scripture. I'm not really necessarily talking about that. Those things are all good, we should do that. I'm talking about pausing. Pausing after something has happened 
to us during our day. Taking a breath and, and, and thinking about what God said to me through what I just experienced. Was it something good? Was it something bad? Heck, was it something indifferent? Something just ordinary? Was it something I might have done right that God was singing? Was it something that I might have done wrong that he was singing in a minor key, probably? Musicians, that's kind of fun. Uh, was it something someone else did to me? How did I react to that something? How did I handle that something? So that's what I'm talking about. Pause. Pause for a few seconds. Pause for a minute. Not a long pause, but pause for more if you can. Just an encouragement to all of us to stop and pause and think about what God said through that experience we just had. Because I'm pretty sure, again, it's that guarantee, God just said something to you during those times. Pause. As part of our morning pause and listening to what God is saying, I've invited three people in our congregation to, to come up and, and share with us. And I've asked them actually to, to share a favorite psalm or even portions of psalm. Because part of our worship in pausing to hear God every, every Sunday morning when we gather together is also to hear God from one another. It's vertical, it's horizontal. So believe it or not, take a look to your right and then your left. God can speak through that person. So we need to hear from each other. So I, I'm gonna invite Olu uh, to come up. I'm and uh, Olu's going to share uh, a psalm that, that speaks to her. Okay. About this time last year, it was April last year, myself and my family, we made a major life decision. We moved from our own country to Canada. Everything that mattered to us, we fitted it into about six or seven suitcase cases, and we came into a land where we didn't know anybody. We didn't have a family member, we didn't know anybody. Our story is like the story of the children of Israel when God told them to step out of Egypt and go into a promised land, which they never knew, but we trusted God, and this particular scripture, you know, stood by me. I would like us to listen to a song that many start to me, and I'll read the scripture. Okay, yesterday we had choir rehearsal, but now we can sing it for real. Come on, help us sing this song. Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd, everybody. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me, defender behind me. Y'all been practicing. I won't fear. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. Thank you, Jesus. My cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing.
somebody just shout Jesus right there. He always guides me. He always guides me. <laughs> Through mountains and valleys. Through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing. His joy is I'll just read it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, we pray unto you, and we commit our lives into your hands. For whatever seasons and times that each one of us are going through, you will help us to know that we are not alone in this race. You will be with us. Whatever we are going through now, Lord, you will be with us. You will be our comfort. You will be our joy. You will be our hope. You will be our healer. You will be our provider. You will be everything that we need. The word of the Lord says you've given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. We pray that will be our portion. We will experience your life and we experience your godliness. And even in the midst of everything that we are going through, you will give us the grace to pause, to listen to you and hear your words of comfort that you speak to us each and every day. Amen. I'm going to invite J.M. De Hoya to come up and likewise share and say thank you to Olu. Uh, thank you, John. You surprised me. I thought it was a, a short message and I didn't know it was the message. But I am not scared. I am not shy to share the word of the Lord for as long as it saves more people. Thank you, Olu, for the message. Psalm 23 is my, mom, my late mom's favorite verse. And I'm going to share with you other verses to somehow add to that. But first, a prayer. May the words from my mouth and the meditation of our minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. So I... John asked me to like find the favorite verse that I may share with the congregation. 
I all I first said Psalm 23. Oh, Olu's gonna I'm gonna share that. So might as well look for one. So I did it in reverse. I looked for my favorite verse, and somehow everything in the Bible from the Old and New Testament are all connected. So my favorite verse was 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxieties unto the Lord, for he cares for you. And I looked for that in Psalms. And voila, Psalm 52, 55, 22. Cast your cares in the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. There are days, there are days that each one of us has worries in our heart. Where will we get the money? Where will we get the food? I had my worries um, the past few months. My dad had cancer. Um, he ha it was an eight year battle. We weren't really financially capable, but I had to go home in the span of one month, traveling 42 hours to see my dad. It was really heartbreaking to see him have a hard time, like trying to let go. But one thing holds me, my wife, my family, my siblings, is that he had this faith in God, and I am at peace that he is with the Lord, with my mother. The second verse that comes to my mind is, I think you know this song. I, I actually remember it more when I sing it rather than saying it. I, forgive me, I don't have a good voice for singing. So it's saying, Thy word is lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Make the Bible your guide in your life because it will never make you wrong. In everything that you do, you trust in the Lord and he will always crown your efforts with success. And the last verse that I had comes from the longest chapter in the, in the Bible. Can you guess what chapter it is? Psalm 109. Oh! So that, that was the second one. Sorry. That was the second one. So Psalm 119 verse... 105, that song. The last one is actually memorable for me because it is the first verse that my son memorized. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come unto him with joyful songs. He has prepared each one of us to serve him, to share his word, be saved. And despite all the challenges, we should thank him that every day we get to wake up, eat two or three times a day, breathe the air, the freedoms that we enjoy, and I am thankful for this country for accepting us. I am thankful for this congregation for opening their arms to people like us of different color, of different faith. I thank you. Maraming salamat po. And finally, And in message, not due, et c'est très milieu. Nous devons le remercier partout. I thank the Lord for everything. Happy Canada Day, bon fête du Canada. 
A good morning to you all. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us forever and always. Uh, merci, Jay. Um, you have a much better singing voice than you think you do. You, you might look good in one of those gold choir robes, I'm just saying. Um, the last person I've asked uh, to share with us today, uh, you heard sing uh, so wonderfully in some wonderful words earlier. So Davina is going to come up and, and share. It's me again. I thank God for a great privilege today. Actually, it's, it's, it's a busy week for me, but I cannot say no because I know that God has uh, talked to Pastor John to, to assign me, so I'll never say no. I, I chose the uh, Psalms, 140, uh, Psalms 145, uh, verse 1 to 6. Can you turn your Bible and uh, read, read with me? A psalm of praise. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise you, your name, forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness is no one can fathom. One generation commends your words to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They, they speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful words. They tell of the power of your awesome words, and I will proclaim your great deeds. May the Lord add and bless his word. What? What this passage all about? This passage speaks the greatness of, and the goodness of God. And why? Why I chose this, this song, which is one of the acoustic songs of King David, which is one of the ip which a man, who is a man from God's own heart, after God's own heart. And I really admire him. And this, this song, David motivates me and inspired me. And I hope you will. This passage, because it speaks who God is, who is our God, that we are worshiping and that God that we serve. King David, the psalmist wrote Psalm 145 as one of his acrostic song. We know that we are created. We were created to worship the Lord. And that's our, our ultimate task is to worship God. Worshiping God means a regular basis of communion with him. David was very specific in, in verse 1. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. And the second verse is, every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. The word forever and ever and the word every day strikes my heart because worshiping God, we should do it in a regular basis. And God, does not accept a second-rate worship. He desires all worship to be firmly directed towards Him and nothing else. So that's meaning every day, all the days of our lives, until our last breath, since we, 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 God gave us breath until the last breath. Meaning, in this first and second verse, David wants to emphasize that the worship is a commitment. It's a constant, constant commitment with God. It's not that you will worship him today. I feel to worship him to, tonight. But it's a constant. We will praise him. We will worship him until we die. And in the third, third verse, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. In the other version, they say unsearchable, inscrutable. No one can understand that. That's why God is encouraging us 
to seek more His face. And it's very important that we know who are we are serving, who is the God that we are worshiping, because when we call Him in His name, the second one is His character is very important. Character, His own very nature and attributes, and upon calling upon His name, He will give attention to us. Let's say I call your name, Pastor Sandy, and you will, you will give your attention to me, right? As we calling our God, like uh, um, Jehovah Jireh, God knows that he, we, call, we call him a Jehovah Jireh, and he will think that my, my daughter is, is calling me, and he, she acknowledged me as her great provider, and God will work according to what we believe and what we know who he is in our lives. That's the second one. One is commitment. Second is his character. And the, the last few verses, which is four, five, and six, our generation commands your works to, an, to another and they tell all your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and I will meditate on your wonderful works. Then they tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. In this part, we are confident. We are confident. We have confidence to, the, to God. We have confidence to speak, to declare, to testify with what God has done into our lives. That's the confession. It, but if we are healed, we are, we, are, uh, we are happy or we have joy, we, we will give it, up, give it up to the Lord. And the, the last one that I want to share, worshiping is the completeness of joy. If we meditate the goodness and the greatness of God, we keep meditating it, it comes into our mind, it, we will keep it in our hearts. And it says, out of abundance of heart, the mouth speaks. And the real joy is to give, give glory, give thanks, praises, and higher thanksgiving to our God. Worship God is our response to his greatness and goodness. We worship God in the matter that he is worthy. Let me end it with this. Worship the one and only God. Many people are worshiping God that have no power to save them and no unconditional love to draw them. As believers, we must press our way to worship God in a regular basis with no excuses. One day, we will stand in the assembly of saints and angels to worship the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us begin now to worship Him in preparation for our heavenly dwelling. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we adore you. We exalt you. We extol you in this place. We acknowledge you, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, the head of this church, the architect of this church, the Jehovah Jireh, the Jehovah Shalom. You are our great, great Father. Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you so much that you are with us. Thank you, Lord. And we give back the glory to you alone. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.